Hey guys, East Texas Squaw Man here, just out in the woods on a beautiful Saturday morning. Uh, I had some thoughts on uh, a different group of people that I hadn't really thought of before when it comes to a whirl or shit hits a fan or the claps or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I had just had a few thoughts I would like to share with you guys, so why don't we go on over to the campfire over here and sit down and talk. Okay, so we have whirl, rule without law, or shit hits the fan, or we have a collapse. We have an event that changes our society, collapses our society one way or another. And the event I'm not really worried about. Um, you know, you prepare, and if you survive the event, then you have to survive everything else. To me, that's just the beginning and it's actually the easiest, easiest part of the event. After that, then you have to deal with all kinds of unknowns. Now, I've been reading a book by an author called A American. It's a series, actually. I think it's called The Survivalist Series. The first book is, uh, I think, Getting Home. The second book is uh, Surviving Home. And I, I think there's three or four books. I'm on the second book right now. Um, but what happens, just kind of a rough idea, I'm not going to give away anything in case you all want to read it, but there's an event, and the guy's stuck on the road, so he has to travel home, and he has to travel, I think it's 200 or 250 miles <clears throat> to get home, and it takes up about the first, I don't know what it is, time frame wise, it might be the first two, three, four weeks after the event. Until, until he makes it home. And then the second book picks up where he's home. And it's not just him, there's, there's a couple other characters in there doing different things. But this particular character, to me, demonstrated some ideas that I hadn't really considered before um, about people. People are gonna be the greatest danger after an event. And I'm not talking about, you know, your group, your mag, your tribe, whatever. Um, I'm talking about all the other people. If you think about society today, Americans today, everybody thinks they deserve this or they deserve that, and there's a big movement for this equal, equal for equality for everybody. But how do you think that's going to play out with the people with mindsets like that during an event or after an event? when they're all starving, when they're all thirsty, when they have no clothing, no shelter, no protection. Um, and it's something I hadn't really put a whole lot of thought to. I knew there'd be troubled people, but I was thinking more along the lines of, you know, bad groups, gangs, violent criminals, and that kind of stuff. And, and then, of course, you got the hungry hordes. But if you think about the mentality of America today, at least 50% of America, according to the polls, it's uh, everybody wants to everything to be equal. Everything is equal share. So what do you do when your group has been preparing and you have a nice, comfortable supply of food, water, shelter, everything you need, and the neighbors down the road get together in mass and come to try to get what they what you have saying that you know this all belongs to all of us all of us should be should share in this equally and try to take what you have um, I've had a lot of thoughts about this because I know a lot of people like this and they know me I don't want them to show up here expecting anything I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to handing out and helping people. That's not a problem at all. But don't come demand it from me. And then there's another thought also. You know, if we did have an event, of course we're going to go under martial law. 
And if you look at the martial law rules, the government basically can confiscate all your food, all your water, anything that you have that they want, they can take. And they will take. And not only that, but they'll take all your weapons too, because you can't be armed. So, in this book, it was suggested that we're at that point. The events happened, it had been a month or two or three, and the government, FEMA, and other agencies, Homeland Security and stuff like that, have decided to uh, take control. And of course, in the book, he talks about these FEMA camps and all that stuff, but there was an interesting idea in, in the whole thing that, that got me was the federal agencies using food rations as reward to people who will sell you out. That made a lot of sense. People are starving and the government agency wants them to tell on you, people that are hoarding, people that are prepared, that actually have stuff, and they're independent and not dependent on the government. Why wouldn't they offer food reward to get people to turn you in? And you don't think a bunch of starving people that think everybody deserves to share wouldn't turn you in so they could get a bigger food chit, food portion, food allocation, and privilege in camp or whatever, whatever kind of reward they offer? So that was one thought that was put in my head, and it was kind of a scary thought. The second second group of people that in this book or book series that seem to be coming out, you know, we all we all know that if, we, if everything went to sh crap, that uh, the criminals are going to have, you know, free reign to do whatever they want. What about sexual predators? What about pedophiles? They will have free reign in a time like that. And in this book, there's several instances where they, I don't know, I guess what a, what a sexual offender does best, they gain confidence of a group of people and then abuse certain portions of that group of people to their sick mind, whatever their benefit is. You know, what, what, there's, there's just, there's so much out there that's bad and if we had a collapse, or if there was a whirl, or if there was a, you know, SHFT situation, then all of those bad will have no control anymore. And it will be nothing but bad everywhere. So, just some things to think about. Something that I've been thinking about, kind of got put in my head by that book. Uh, you know, I don't know if we're ever going to have a collapse. I don't know if we're ever going to have a anything you know nuclear strike whatever you know i in my lifetime i don't know if it's going to happen you know mathematically they, st they say that you know it, it's going to happen different types of things will happen you know solar flares and, and stuff like that and i may not i may never see any of it but my kids will probably or their kids or my grandchildren so <clears throat> Anyway, I just, just a few thoughts. Things have been bothering me a little bit. And I'm going to probably quit talking about this stuff and just go back to some bushcraft skills after this video. Because uh, no matter what, you always got to fall back on the basics, right? That's why I'm out here in the woods every, every weekend playing. Practicing. So, hey, get out in the woods. Enjoy this beautiful weekend. we got a cold front in. Actually brought the temperature down to about 85. Nice weekend to be out, guys. All right, East Texas. Well, man, God bless. Y'all take it easy.